Behavioral Analysis, Elliot Roger, Part 2, Emotion, Anxiety, and Social Isolation. Welcome to Part 2 of our Behavioral Analysis of Elliot Roger. In Part 1, we established that Elliot has demonstrated characteristics of narcissism, grandiosity, and highly shallow expectations from the opposite sex. Elliot has also demonstrated that he hasn't focused on developing his inner character and disciplining himself to become better on his road to self-actualization. In part two of our analysis, we will examine Elliot in terms of temperament, emotion, and social anxiety. In addition, we will also have the testimony of Lucky Radley and others who examined Elliot's interpersonal communication from a personal perspective. Let's begin our analysis. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm just sitting in my car right now, after watching that beautiful sunset descend beyond that hill up there. <laughs> Jeez. If the word mundane were to have a facial expression, this would be it. I imagine Elliot has attended this spot many times to watch the Santa Barbara sunset, and now it's become this lonely, bittersweet reminder to him of days gone by. We have his eyes roll up in the top of his head... Uh, his paralanguage is unenthused, and he speaks in this type of weak whisper. And he looks like he's ready for a major change in his life, but he only knows the negative. Contemplating over a sunset is truly a relaxing thing. Personally, I do it all the time. It gives us perspective on days gone by, and it also gives us that a sense that at an end of an era can be both bittersweet and beautiful all at the same time. It's unfortunate that Elliot got a more destructive perspective than a constructive one. Enjoying a nice vanilla latte. Oh yeah, that's nice. Makes me feel all pumped up. There's nothing like a nice vanilla latte to make it feel all pumped up. Probably sponsored by the incel community. <laughs> I know I'm being slightly facetious, but sometimes you have to be in order to protect your own sanity. I've been doing a lot of thinking about how sad and unfair my life has been. All because girls haven't been attracted to me. I've been going through college for two and a half years now, and in those two and a half years, I've had to rot in bleak and sad loneliness while other guys get to enjoy all the pleasures of, you know, sex and socializing and partying. I've never had a taste of that because no girls give me a chance. This would be my main question for Elliot. When was the last time you ever asked a woman on a date? I would be willing to parlay that he never asked any woman on a date once in his entire life. I seriously believe Elliot was capable of finding someone, but his problem was he was too fixated on this blonde archetype of his and not focusing on or appreciating a woman's character. I understand that I was rather tautological, when I went into depth on Elliot's lack of character and lack of recognition of character in the first video. But I see this theme constantly emerging when Elliot goes on talking about his lonely life. Elliot didn't have to live a lonely life. And I bet if we were to establish a random sample of 10 women in, say, like a dating game scenario, and Elliot were to be the person to date, I bet at least, at minimum, one or two people would give him a chance so long as he was genuine, displayed good character, and didn't get off, give off any weird vibes or talked about self-entitlement. Women did 
didn't give Elliot a chance because Elliot didn't give himself a chance to prove himself, nor did he engage women or ask them on a date. It takes more than just one word to ask a woman on a date. And clearly, I don't think Elliot even talked to them at all, other than to say maybe hi and then expect them just to fall deeply in love with him. Completely unrealistic. No girl at my college has ever expressed any interest in me. I mean, you give a chance to all these stupid, obnoxious guys that I see, that I see you walking with, but you don't give a chance to me. Why not? I'm, I'm such a magnificent guy. I'm beautiful. Again, he is demonstrating narcissism by describing himself as magnificent and beautiful. The way he slicks his hair back with his left hand is so pretentious and rather ridiculous. And that's what we get from the nonverbal. Could you imagine Elliot asking a woman on a date and doing this type of nonverbal communication? Hi, I'm Elliot Roger. I'm so beautiful and magnificent. You can't deny that. Want to be my sunset date for tonight? I totally understand why women would be turned off to this kind of behavior. It's narcissistic, it's pretentious, superficial, glib, and incredibly arrogant. If Elliot's approach was, Hi, I'm Elliot. I'm a nature enthusiast, and I was wondering if you knew where I could find the best sunset spot in Santa Barbara. I would deeply appreciate if you can let me know where that is. Could I buy you a vanilla latte? Also, I'm new to this area, so maybe we can go out sometime and you can just show me around this area. I bet he would have a way better chance of finding a date with this approach. In reality, he took no approach, nor did he make any communicable effort. You can't deny that. I've traveled all over the world. I have so much to talk about. I'm civilized, intelligent sophisticated. I have a sense of style. And yet you girls don't see it. And Elliot fails to demonstrate how he is sophisticated and intelligent. Elliot is definitely an intelligent person if you were to read his manifesto. Elliot has a unique colloquial expression in terms of how he talks verbally. And it's also seen in his writing expressions as well. The only thing Elliot has demonstrated in any actionable sense is that he has a sense of style. Elliot talks about in his manifesto about traveling to Morocco, Malaysia, the United Kingdom, and some other places throughout the world. And that is always a great icebreaker in bringing people's interest towards you. I know with my girlfriends that they love talking to people who have traveled to different, different parts of the world because they desire to do it themselves. If Elliot was able to connect with such people, he might have been able to find a date and even find someone to travel the world with on many adventures. Unfortunately, Elliot succumbed to his neuroticism and emotion and his anxiety, and the anticipation of rejection really got in his way. I wish he could have overcame these odds, because there was a way for him to do so. And every single day, I have to be insulted by the sight of all these lesser men walking around with beautiful girls. I see so many couples where the guy is just so unworthy of having a beautiful girlfriend like that. And yet, they're together. He has her love. And I've never had any of that love and affection from girls. Why do you girls give those guys a chance, but not me? I deserve it more. The entitlement is coming out of him again. Elliot, again, is demonstrating his fixations on other people's relationships and not focusing on his own inner character development. I don't think Elliot considered the fact that the reason why these couples are together might have to do with a genuine emotional connection established through effective interpersonal skills. Women love men with good character, and they, and they take more of a painstaking approach when they evaluate a potential partner for a relationship. It's all about how you carry yourself in confidence. 
the best way to get confidence is to stop caring about how people perceive you and just go with your genuine nature. Whether it be positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Just be you. Not all people are going to like espresso as some prefer vanilla lattes, for example. As long as you're coming from a place of benevolence and good faith, the rest will take care of itself. Elliot was too fixated on other people and anticipating their relationships and actions when he should have been out there going through the trials and errors of dating. Some people you will click with right away, while others you will just be like oil and water. That's just life. The fact that Elliot wasn't willing to subject himself to potential of real rejection was the reason why he wasn't able to obtain a girlfriend. He didn't go through the process. I think Elliot needed to work on mitigating his neurotic tendencies, and that was his biggest hindrance when it came to interpersonal skills. You need to accept that some people will reject you as a romantic interest. That's just the way people are. But there's also some certain people you're going to connect with as well. You, you will find connections. That's just a fact of life. It's, it's not fair. Every single day I have to be insulted by the sight of guys enjoying girls while I'm all alone. Even watching that sunset up there is a bittersweet experience because while I love the peaceful beauty of it, I can't help but think of all the other guys who get to enjoy that same sunset with a beautiful girlfriend at their side while I'm sitting here all alone in my car. There's no beautiful girl in that passenger seat to enjoy it with me. Because you girls have something against me. I don't know what it is. Whenever I drive through this college town called Isla Vista, which is just right next to UCSB, I see so many hot, beautiful blonde girls walking with absolute stupid, obnoxious-looking douchebags. Instead of focusing on quote, hot, beautiful, blonde girls, end quote, Elliot should have expanded his variety. If he seriously wanted someone to give him a chance on a date, he should be at least be open and willing to give someone who's not the beautiful blonde girl archetype a chance. Reciprocity would be acceptable in this case, but Elliot doesn't seem open to other potential experiences when it comes to dating. Elliot's lack of openness is definitely a character hindrance for him in terms of self-actualization. In addition, and the delusion Elliot has is he tends to think these so-called beautiful couples are in relationships as a way to spite him and insult him. Their relationships obviously have nothing to do with Elliot, and Elliot's fixation on this delusion is really what drove him to madness. And I just can't help but think how wrong that is. Those beautiful blonde girls should be walking with me. Not those brutes. I deserve them more. Why do those horrible men get to experience the love and affection of such beautiful, heavenly girls? Well, I've had to rot in loneliness all my life. It's not fair. It's such an injustice. I don't understand you girls. It's like your sexual attraction is flawed. It's perverted. Elliot's perceptions of benevolent women is flawed. They are looking for guys with good character, sociable, and they are fun to be with in social settings. Elliot is expressing himself as a reclusive introvert in this video, who expects women to fall in love with him at the utterance of one word mentioned to them. It's not realistic. It's delusional. You're attracted to the wrong kind of guy. You should be attracted to guys like me. Beautiful, magnificent guys. This world... It's so twisted. It's so cruel. 
You girls make it cruel. You girls have starved me of sex and enjoyment and pleasure for my entire youth. You've taken eight years away from my life. Eight years I'll never get back. Those eight years of loneliness were due to Elliot's extreme neuroticism, lack of emotional regulation, unwillingness to learn character development through openness, and a sense of expectation without acquiring the effort to develop effective interpersonal communication. It wasn't the woman's fault, and even if they gave him a sly or cruel remark to him in the past, it doesn't justify a plot for mass murder. Do you know how much misery you've caused me? I'm such a nice guy. Why won't you give me a chance? Elliot, you never gave yourself a chance. You never gave yourself a chance to explore your surroundings in terms of engaging people, making life lasting, memorable experiences with potential friends, and building upon your own interpersonal skills as you progressed in life. You had an opportunity to explore networks, and yet you failed to take the necessary steps to engagement. You allowed yourself to rot in loneliness. You allowed yourself to be walled in your own false perceptions of women and what their genuine desires were for relationships. You categorized women in groups rather than recognizing them as individuals with unique and profound characteristics of their own. You were superficially lost in your own desire to obtain a beautiful blonde girlfriend that you never gave yourself a chance to explore other possibilities. You viewed women as a commodity and denied their own humanity. Humanity didn't reject you, Elliot. You allowed yourself to be rejected. <sighs> I truly wish there was a way I could have reached out to you and send this message to you directly. The neighbor of Elliot Roger, the man police say killed six people in Isla Vista, California Friday night, is talking about his neighbor and the interactions he had with the 22-year-old. He has asked us not to identify him. Take a listen. Can you describe kind of what it is he said to you, um, the times that you did talk to him, the half a dozen or so times you did talk to him? He didn't talk. He just, he didn't talk. I mean, uh, when I, when I talked with him for like the three hours, I pretty much, I would have to say like, I would talk for five minutes to try to like get some sort of reaction. And then he would say, I don't know, one sentence. And then I'd have to talk to him for another five minutes and then one sentence would come out and like I mean I had I had absolutely no idea I didn't even know what college he went to like I talked to him for that long and I was like what do you want to do like like what's your major like where do you want to go like what do you want to do with your life never came out he didn't say a single thing it was like he seriously did not want friends like he's saying he wants friends he wants like to hang out with people or like he wants girls and like every single time we invite him outside there were plenty of girls and just didn't even make an effort, didn't talk to anybody. I mean, he was so closed off. And it was like when he's sitting there, you could just tell he's just thinking these thoughts in his head the entire time. He's just talking to himself in his head the entire time. It's like, why don't you talk to people here? I mean, it just... Would you describe him as one of the most strange or odd people you've ever met? Have you ever met anyone like him? I met a lot of stranger people. This is IV. I mean, come on, just walk down to that park and you'll see some crazy... People, but the, the, the time that you did talk to him or he talked to you a, a little bit more was the only time he seemed aggressive the time when he came and his face was all bruised and, and beaten yeah I mean I wouldn't say aggressive though he, he just he was so emotional like I can't I can't describe how emotional he was, was he shaking and, and crying shaking, or? adrenaline rush uh, his, his it was like water faucets just coming out like just constantly down his cheeks for a solid half hour I and mean, he was so upset i've never seen anybody like that mad like in my entire life and what threats did he make at that time well he was saying like i'm gonna kill all those i'm gonna kill all of them i'm gonna kill myself like i mean like and i don't know if that's what set it off i don't know that like if that's what set the plan in motion but that's a long time in the making because that was a long time ago how long ago was that? Uh, like, I want to say four to seven months ago, but uh, when they did the press conference, they said that happened like July 15th when he went to the hospital. So I'm guessing that's like when it happened. So yeah. He said that he'd been planning it for a year. So 
We were almost on a year. So, yeah, that's... But I, it wasn't that bad. I mean, yeah, he got the crap kicked out of him, but I can't imagine that's the one event that set him off. Our plan tonight for students killed in that rampage. KCAL 9's Randy Page is live at Westlake High School, where one of the victims graduated last year. And Randy, we understand you have some details on the, new, on the uh, gunman after speaking with one of his childhood friends. That's exactly right. In fact, many of the people who knew Elliot Roger describe a young man who was far different than the person we see on the videotape he left behind. This is one of them. I like flipped out. I went crazy. Like. Lucky Radley is describing the moment he saw this video and he immediately realized the mass murderer in Isla Vista was his childhood friend. Speechless. Radley says he got an even greater shock when he saw his name in the 137-page manifesto Elliot Roger wrote about his tortured life. Speaking of a group of kids his stepmother wanted him to be friends with, Roger wrote, one of them was a black boy named Lucky Radley. He was a fourth grader, and he would later go to the same middle school as me, where he would become an object of my extreme jealousy and hatred. Looking back, I can't believe I actually played with him as a friend in my father's neighborhood. Then, speaking of Radley's arrival at Rogers Middle School years later, Roger wrote, he immediately became popular with the pretty girls of his grade. I hated him for it. I mean, I, I didn't even know I, I, I was uh, popular with the girls. You know, I was, I was just friendly to everybody. Radley describes the Elliot Roger he knew as a smart loner who never looked him in the eye and had very little to say. He would have, you know, one, one word answers. You know, I never really heard him speak. That is, until Radley saw this video, he says he couldn't believe his eyes. If I can't have you, girls, I will destroy you. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know who that was. I didn't. The guy that I knew wouldn't say a word. Now, Radley says he stares in disbelief at the childhood friend he thought he knew. I can't wrap my mind around it. Uh, it just, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. And coming up this evening here at Westlake High School, a candlelight vigil will be held for all of the victims, particularly Veronica Weiss, who attended school here and was on the water polo team as friends of the victims, as well as friends of the man responsible for this carnage are trying to figure out why this had to happen. Live at Westlake, Randy Page, KCAL 9 News. He says Lucky would later go to the same middle school as me, where he would become an object of my extreme jealousy and hatred. Looking back, I can't believe I actually played with him as a friend in my father's neighborhood. What's it feel to, to see something like that now? Yeah, when I saw that, I was just shocked. I, I couldn't, um, it, I was, I literally didn't believe that that was, you know, coming from him. I didn't, um, when I heard everything, I, I'm still shocked and uh, it's just a crazy feeling. I, I was, I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. Do you have, ever have any reason to expect or know that he hated you like that? Oh, no, not at all. Um, you know, from every, uh, from, from what I saw, I, I thought he, you know, I thought we were pretty good friends. Um, you know, well, yeah, he was always he was always nice. He was always or not nice, but he he didn't say much. But uh, we played games together, and he you know never got it was nothing. He wouldn't say anything like or he wouldn't say anything, but he wouldn't give me the impression that uh, we weren't you know on good terms. We've learned so much now uh, about this young man because of what he posted on YouTube and what he put on this manifesto mm -hmm. that he did. I understand you sort of followed him or kept in touch on Facebook over the years. Was there anything ever that you saw on Facebook or on social media of his that gave you any reason to be concerned? I haven't actually. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't even, I, I haven't, I, I didn't keep in touch with him on Facebook. I, I saw him on um, I, my first time seeing him since middle school was on the, the video. Um, when they told me about it and yeah that's my first time hearing about it or seeing him or really hearing him talk that's my first time hearing him talk is when I saw the video that, that's my first time hearing him say more than you know one word answer so we've already established Elliot as an extreme introvert who is high in neuroticism and low in openness to learn 
The testimonies of Elliot's anonymous neighbor and Elliot's childhood friend, Lucky Radley, speaks volumes in reinforcing these axioms. The best way to examine Elliot Rogers' behavior is to contrast him to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. As you can see, each level corresponds to a level of achievement. The rudimentary level is physiological needs. Once physiological needs are met, this transitions into the question of safety needs, then love and belonging needs, esteem level, and then finally, self-actualization. The concept of self-actualization reflects upon achieving one's full potential and transcending into creativity, acceptance of facts, and confidence in actions without judgment, belittlement, or prejudices. In this hierarchy, Elliot would be trapped between physiological and safety needs. This would isolate him from ascending to the higher stage of love and belonging, which is what he was seeking throughout the course of his life. The isolation in this stage is not due to Elliot not achieving sex, which is in the physiological stage, but more predicated on the fact that Elliot's quick temper and erotic state is trapping him from ascending to the hierarchy of needs. In a lot of cases, he would have been able to achieve self-actualization if he was to receive help and find a way to uh, master homeostasis, being in a steady state where he can be safe in himself, being able to be secure in his own body, be secure with his family, have a sense of morality, and have a sense of autonomy that he can actually be able to take control of his life. And if he was able to achieve that, then he would transition into love and belonging, where he would be more ready for more intimate uh, relationships. And as that would transcend, his self-esteem would build up, his confidence would build up. He'd be more readily to achieve once he's been able to accept himself. And then eventually he would transition into self-actualization where he'd be more tapped into his creativity. He would have like a strong core within himself in terms of morality. He'll be able to be able to walk down the street and not have to worry about being so... Uh, emotional when seeing like another couple because he's already confident within himself. And that's what Elliot would never was. He was never confident in himself. And that's the tragedy of this whole story. Thank you for taking the time to watch this behavioral analysis. My hope is that you all found this video informative and something you can take with you if you ever come across someone who may need the direst of help. If you are someone who suffers from depression have suicidal tendencies, or had suicidal tendencies in the past, I recommend these resources if you live in Canada or in the United States. I will have links posted on the bottom of this video for your convenience. Thank you for watching, and remember that you don't ever have to go through these hardships alone. There is help if you wish to explore it. Resurgence is always in your grasp if you are willing to take the pain and convert it into strength. If you wish to reach out to me, I would be more than happy to help you out any way I can. Take care, everyone.